for people from other tables saying the same things. How did they get there? Because they have the same, similar human experience, okay? A different combination of some things. Did you also notice at every table, even though I said witnessing to yourself when you're alone, but you're always thinking of others. Did you notice that? So you all just proved you're never alone. You're always thinking of the other, whether it's impressing someone on social media, or thinking about, oh, I've got to do this so that I look good in this scenario, or whatever, or even good things that you mentioned too, that are like, oh, I've got to think of charity. So you also, you just, you just proved that you're never alone also, right? But isn't it interesting too that whenever you're with others, you're still alone at the same time. You're always in both places. Did you notice that? Think of even right now, you're listening to me, but you're still thinking about how you're thinking about what I'm saying, right? You're still having your own reactions, not the same as your neighbors. So there's a oneness here, but there's also a singleness here, right? And so wherever you are, you can't help but be witnessing to yourself and witnessing to others at all times. It's the left and right leg of your experience, right? And so that's why the next topic is witnessing to your family in your home, whoever you know, you're living with, all that. And then, of course, on the, the, the third topic, which we get to tomorrow, is about witnessing in the church, as the church, and out on the street, and wherever you may be. Um, and so when we're, when we're constantly thinking of ourselves, what, what's very interesting is how many of you, when you're talking about witnessing to the angels, you were thinking, I need to pray. How many of you came to those conclusions? I need to pray. We were thinking about, yeah, sorry? When, when, so when, you're, when you were doing this topic, talking about witnessing when you are alone, how many of you were considering prayer as a witness? It is, yeah, it is. One of the greatest witnesses you could do is pray when you are alone. Uh, we talk about spiritual food, right? And your daily prayer is like your daily food, right? And every Sunday and feast day, or every Sunday is kind of like your, your um, the, the royal food, right? Where you're going to the heavenly banquets, right? And you're receiving these incredible, um, these incredible gifts at the banquet of our Lord's table. And in addition, when you receive, you know, like holy relics or an unction or holy confession and stuff, those things are also the, the medicines, right? But it's very fascinating, and I think, um, maybe it was Pope Shenouda who said, is that people go all over the place for their answers. They go to these seminars, they go to yoga, they go to all these things um, for some insight into how to truly be, but they won't do the one thing that they all have the power to do at all times, which will help the most, prayer, right? Inner transformation. And when you are praying, you are witnessing to the angels, to the saints, to God himself. You're saying, I'm giving you my time. What is one of the few gifts you actually have? Time, right? If I said, hey, can you help me fix my house? You might not be able to do it. Can you come and play some music at my house? You might not be able to do it. Can you offer me some, can you share some money with me so I can do this thing? You might not be able to do it. But the one gift that absolutely everyone has, whether you can speak or not, whether you have some great talent or not, is time. Time. Perhaps God created time simply so that you would all have at least one thing to offer. And so even if when you think of prayer, well, I gotta say these prayers, sure, that's part of becoming disciplined in your prayer life. But it's not actually a requirement, right? Like we have the uh, Shimo or Shahimo, um, is like our, our Agpeya, right? Those are great prayers. The Agpeya, too, is, these, are, these are incredible prayers. Change my, they change our lives. But that's not the only way to pray, right? When we come together, we have a structure so that we can be one in body and soul. We cross ourselves and bow at the same, same time. But it doesn't mean that you necessarily can't do anything else like in your internal thoughts and just make another cross because you're thinking about something. But when you come to the place where you realize just giving time to God is a great gift. When people say, I don't have time, I think that's a lie. Every time that someone says, I don't have time to pray, it's either that they're totally lying or they're just ignorant. 
right? They're, they don't realize that they have time. So I like to ask questions. Um, hey, what's your favorite show? And they'll tell me. And if they don't watch me, hey, who's your favorite band? Then you listen to all oh, this. Hey, have you ever driven a car? Yes. If the answer was that they had any answer for any of those things, they clearly had time. Have you ever eaten food? <laughs> yes. Then you have time to pray. Just stop eating. Stop eating. <laughs> the one thing that we couldn't do since the garden, right? <laughs> right? God, God said, eat. And Adam was like, sure. I'll eat. He's like, but that's the one thing he shouldn't have done. The one tree. He could have eaten anything else in the one tree, right? Um, I, as a high school teacher years ago, I remember it was at a Catholic high school. And, you know, they're... Uh, in every church even, right? In our, in our old churches, we have people who come for social reasons. God bless them. At least it's a reason that keeps them coming. Uh, same thing in schools. Even Catholic schools, for instance, if we had an Orthodox school, it would be the same. There are people who come because they know the community, they like the people, they have a say in the education and some sort of influence. But I could, I could kind of tell, and not, not judging, but you can tell someone when they're closer to God, right? Sometimes you can usually tell. Sometimes people are faking it. But there's a kind of thing you can see, like, that person's close to God. This, they're not, what they're doing, they're not doing for show. And other people, you're going, I hope they're close to God. But their behaviors are very disturbing. And I remember watching some of these students. I was mostly a choir teacher. Um, I taught choir. Um, but I had some other classes, too. And I, I remember these kids, and they just looked like their only vision of life was money, popularity, pleasure. It's just, just like, you know. Just nothing, nothing with beauty and depth. And I just said to the kids one day, hey, how many of you went to church on Sunday? Cricket, cricket. They're like, none of the kids in the class, maybe like on some of the classes, like one or two. How many of you said a prayer this morning? Cricket, cricket, you know. Um, just, it's all right, just tell me, why, why don't you pray? I asked him, oh, I don't have time, I'm really busy. These are high schoolers. These are high schoolers. I'm like, you want to know busy? Have some kids. Wait, no, no, wait. Okay, wait. Don't have kids. Yeah, but, uh, but like, I'm like, like I, I do not believe anyone in, any one of my students was more busy than I was or am. Not at all. I wouldn't believe that. It was always so busy. I'm like, I got a solution. I'm going to stop class. I'm going to give you five minutes to just pray so that you have time for prayer. Go ahead. And I wasn't going to lead. I was letting them do their private prayers. And I just waited and I looked up and they're all just staring at me like. <laughs> because they forgot how to talk to God. And they forgot that they don't even need to talk to God, right? So if I wanted to become close friends with Ivan, I have to see I didn't, I'm very good. With Ivan, do I have to say a thing? Just come here. Hi. Hi. Right? I just have to be here. I have to show up. And that is what prayer is like. Right? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll have that time later. <laughs> By the electric candle in place of the fire. Uh, so, so we, if you don't have time, there's only one thing we could possibly say to you. Make time. Make time. Okay? Uh, so if you do anything, you can pray. Like it's the gift God gave you. And, and if you don't pray, you are choosing to starve. If you don't drink the spiritual waters, you are choosing to be dehydrated, right? So if you don't drink from the spiritual water, how can you witness to anyone else is the real, the real conclusion here, right? Um, and if you are like fasting for God, for God and from food, that's safer. It's safer to give up all food and to just go to God. We know Moses, Elijah, Christ fasted for 40 days. Saint Seraphim of Sarov and monks with him, they would go up into the mountains um, for like months, like not eat anything. And they'd come back and they didn't know what day it was. They didn't eat. It's safer to do that than to fast from God and eat and eat and eat. Right? If you do the opposite, great. So sometimes when you wake up in the morning, instead of putting your hope in coffee, I just need coffee. Oh my God, I can make it through the day unless I have coffee. That's funny, but it becomes a lie if you live that way, right? 
it becomes a hypocrisy. And what's, what's that danger? Being Christian in name only. That's what taking God's name in vain really means. It's not just saying his name with anger. It's saying you're a Christian, but not even giving Christ some time. Right? And we're all tempted. As a priest, I'm tempted. Some Sunday mornings, I am so tired. So tired. Sometimes I'm just like excited, ready to go. But some Sunday mornings, I'm like, I'll just call up my dad and say, hey, can you celebrate the liturgy? I'm just, I just need a day off. I have that temptation, but I know it's a lie. So you've got to see through the lie in order to witness. Because it's always about the lies of Satan. When you're tested, or sorry, tested by God, but tempted by Satan, it's always about his suggestion. A lie. You don't need to pray. You need to have more you time. You need to just, don't worry about your faith. Just just do something that is just like, set. you just need to get centered. Okay? You just need to eat the right breakfast. You just need, blah, blah, blah. Satan will keep going if you give him the time of day. So resist the devil and he will flee from you. Okay? So some other solutions that remind you to pray having a bracelet, right, that is like an icon bracelet, and then whenever you look at it, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, so. um, Do you have, in your home, do you have an icon or a cross in every room? And if you can't, you say, I can't afford it, just print one out, paper cross. <laughs> <laughs> so, have a reminder all the time. Um, do you have a, I had, there was, I got from a St. Anthony Coptic Monastery in California, I had a sticker here. It still reminds me of God, but it's faded. So I got to put a new one on. To just remind me that when I pick up my phone, I should be holy, right? I should use this only for holy things. Um, when you, uh, when you, uh, you're going to watch TV, and it's, again, it's, we're not saying don't ever watch TV. We're just saying know what you're going into, right? There's going to be a battlefield. So do you have a cross above the TV that you look at? Before you turn on the TV, do you cross yourself, right? If there's certain times of day you're more likely to be tempted or give in to peer pressure, do you pray before you're in that situation? Prayer, prayer, prayer. It's the easiest thing, and we make it out to be rocket science because we have times where other people need to prayer and we let them, right? But, but prayer is your, also your intimacy with the Holy Trinity. It's that small gift of time that means everything to God, right? You are so important to Him that when you don't pray, you're sending a message. What's the message? Yeah, I don't want to. He says, I'm your husband, right? Christ is the husband of the church. You're members of the body of Christ, the bride of Christ. So when you don't pray, you're saying, I don't want to. Do you want to be that kind of a witness? I don't want to. When you say that to God, the angels are like, oh. you know, how could you not want him? Right? I saw a, um, uh, so this is funny. So one, someone from church wants us to do more like short videos. So she says, I need, Father, you need to get Instagram. Or, uh, and I was like, really? <laughs> She's like, yeah, okay, I'll see what I can do for the witness. First thing I get on Instagram is like porn. I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like trying to like block all these things. Oh, I'm like, is there any hope for this? And I started like harding things that I would find, like look up kittens or whatever, right? And so, and so now I'm getting all these kitten videos. And it's so funny. So when you when you spend time with good things, you actually you see God in good things, right? So there's this one video. And, uh, of course, some people are sending out positive vibes, and I'm like, I know what this is from. This is God's stamp, even in a cat. This cat was videotaped watching a phone. So even our cats are addicted now. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but the cat, one of the cat's owners had just died. And they had a video of the owner that was co coming onto the screen. So they showed this video for this cat, and this cat's just sitting there like a human, just like watching. And... Um, and, and all of a sudden, the cat sees this person who has died, and the cat's looking like this, and just doesn't move. Stillness, total stillness. And then lays its head right on the cell phone. And just stayed there. And I was like, I mean, these kinds of things, I'm a, I, I'm a ridiculous man, but I, like, I will cry when I see things like that. I'm like, because I just see the purity of God, that, that when you don't pray, 
Of course he's like, I guess I'm not welcome, so I won't push myself. But what he really wants to do is to come to you, right? And be like, I'm, I'm here. Will you, will you let me in? And so when he's at the gate, let him in, right? You have to know who to let into your house. So you have the heart. Is the what of the temple? Your heart is the oh. altar. So when God's knocking, the greatest offering you could put on your altar, it's your altar, but it's to put something he recognizes, which is his own, right? His own. And so you put Christ in all situations there on your altar. And the Holy Spirit is able to lift it up, right? And bring it to the Father so that you can be one with him. So witnessing when you're alone, you are never alone, right? But if you don't witness when you are alone, you will not be able to witness to your best everywhere else, okay? But be aware of also how others are witnessing to you. When you go and serve the poor, sometimes we think, oh, I'm doing such good for the poor, oh, I'm really helping them. Actually, they're helping you. Because when Christ says, if you do any of this to the least of my brothers and sisters, right, you've done it to me. But when you do something to Christ, you always receive. So when you think you're witnessing to another, they're actually also witnessing to you. You're never alone, but you're always still single at the same time, right? You're having a singular experience and a communal experience at all times. Do it well. Questions? Comments? Good news. One question. Um, the too busy to pray. Um, I feel like, and I might, might be speaking for more than just myself, but that oftentimes means that I'm too mentally preoccupied to be able to clear my thoughts to pray. It's a, like, unlike eating, unlike driving or working, watching TV, it's the only thing that really requires you to be truly present. And that's a challenge in itself. So even if you have nothing to do, you're still busy. So there's distractions, right? Distractions when we're busy. We're distracted in something else. Right. We're committed to something else. Right. Well, the good news is, um, even in prayer, like some people say, well, I can't pray because I get distracted. Who said that you needed to have perfect focus? That's a goal, like way up here. I don't always accomplish that. But do I feel that my prayer has value every time I pray? Absolutely. I've never prayed and, and thought um, that it wasn't worth the experience. So we have, uh, well, I have a story to tell you, but um, St. Isaac the Syrian talks about good distractions and bad distractions. He says bad distractions, like think you're in the liturgy and you're like, I want the hamburger. Right? That's a bad distraction. You start thinking about food, right? Or like, what is she wearing? <laughs> That's a stupid headscarf, right? Uh, she looks better in, in gray, right? Um, or whatever kinds of silly things, right? It's silly things that distract us. There are bad distractions, but there's also good distractions. A good distraction if while you're praying, okay, you want to pray the Our Father, and you say, <coughs> forgive us our trespasses, and then you think of a sin you just committed, and then you stop praying the Our Father, because you realize you need to repent for something. That's the point. That's the whole point. That's a good distraction. Or you're praying a psalm and you realize, I should have been kinder to my mother. And you stop praying the psalm. Everyone else is praying. What are you going to do? Scold yourself? <laughs> no. That was what you needed to learn in prayer. So when you're speechless, right? When you're speechless. Like, I think of, um, I mean, I can be a very chatty guy, as you know. Already, um, but I remember like when I saw my wife coming down the aisle, right at her marriage. I was just like, "Huh," <laughs> like, like this is real. I'm just like, but there was nothing to say. It was just going like, "Wow!" Like, so in prayer, you have those moments too. Those are good distractions, whether it's a reminder of repentance or a reminder to be thankful for something, right? But I'll tell you of a time I wasted time in prayer, but had a huge blessing from it. Um, I was so angry with, uh, with one of my bosses years ago. I felt totally scapegoated. I felt um, this person was playing favorites and a whole bunch of things. And I felt like I was just mistreated and I was furious. And I was uh, visiting my parents' home. We were, we were living in a different city. I was um, staying at my parents' house and in Spokane. And I was too angry to sleep. 
How many of you ever felt that? Too angry to sleep with my teeth hurt when I jump. Wow. So, so I went. I, I went downstairs. Everyone else is asleep, and I lit a candle. Um, just a small red votive candle um, on a wall hanger, and there's icons there. And I was just praying and was sitting. And I knew I needed to pray for my enemy because he was acting like an enemy. I knew I needed to. So I start praying, and I start thinking about giving him a piece of my mind, right? Like. And, um, and, and, and then I realized I'd spent minutes and minutes just thinking about what I would say to him to prove him wrong and prove that he was a jerk. That was my goal. And the candle went out. And I was like... <laughs> right? Even if that candle was going to go out anyway, I, I realized what it meant. It meant what I was doing wasn't prayer. Right? I was still taking time to pray, so I had time to be reached by God, but instead I used that time in a selfish way, a prideful, arrogant way. And I said, I see, Lord, I'm sorry. Let me start again. I started from the beginning, I prayed this set of prayers, and then I prayed so hard, I tried to focus. It's just like anything you want to do well, you put focus into it, right? Um, anything you did in school, or you getting good grades, took hard work. Playing sports took hard work. Getting your job, it takes hard work. You're just, you're capable of it. So the distractions were coming. I wanted to say these arrogant things in my mind to my boss. And I just kept saying, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me and my boss, sinners. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. Bless him. Forgive him. Guide him. Guide me. Forgive me. And I just kept doing that over and over. And the candle reignited. And I went. <laughs> like, I was just shocked. I was shocked. Because that had been many minutes. Candles just don't do that. They can go smaller, right? This tiny flame and then come back. This was just out and came back. And I was I was just like, and I what I realized, I was like, I, I think that was God saying, now that's prayer. I accept that, right? And finished more prayer and felt so much lighter of heart. I felt like I did accomplish the goal of praying for my boss. And I went over to blow the candle out, and I, I blew it out. There was no wax left. There was no wax left. But just giving the time, right, making that sacrifice, because it is a sacrifice. What are we talking about in Christianity? The way of the cross, right? The way of the cross. Everything takes sacrifice, but it's different levels of sacrifice, and it's really not that much. Even if while you're brushing your teeth, right, if you, before you get in the habit of just waking up, making the sign of the cross, and saying, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner, or whatever prayer um, you want to pray while you're getting in order. Just do something. Just one small thing. Good morning, God, instead of good God, it's morning. Right? <laughs> Cardinal Fulton Sheen would say. Um, say, good morning, God, and just start the conversation. I mean, don't be a weirdo. Be like, Jesus, I love you. <laughs> that, might be, that might be a little crazy, okay? But, um, no, but he'll still appreciate it. It's just... Your, your family might not. Um, but uh, but no, just do something, even just a little bit, and then make that time where it's just you and him. Close the door, right? Even if you can't close the door of a room, close the door of your mouth and just be and witness. I think we just have, we have time. It's the time. Time, for, time to have lunch. Time to have lunch, okay. God bless you. Thank you so much. Um, let's say a quick prayer. In the name of the Father. So, uh, you want to pray for bless the food? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Lord, help us to witness to you and your holy angels and all the holy saints, our family in heaven, as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil one. And praise Jesus, our Lord. For then is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for everyone. Make us worthy, Lord, to praise you and to worship you for all the blessings, and especially the food which you have given us to eat and drink. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you.